How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to go ahead and kick off a little bit of a, a different approach to the storage that we've taken a look at in the previous few videos. In the ESXi specific videos, we went through and logged into the ESXi host and configured the storage and the networking and stuff like that so we could get our iSCSI communication to work on our ESXi host. Well, that was all well and good, right? We're going to go ahead and log into the vCenter server, which I'm already there. I just need to go ahead and pull up the web browser. And we're going to configure ESXi host 3, so avert host 3, so that we can go ahead and add our iSCSI communication to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that process. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this guy. And there's a few things that we need to do out of the gate. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the VM kernel adapters. And I'm going to go ahead and click on add networking. Add networking here. This is going to be a VM kernel adapter. I'm going to click on next. Select the target de uh, device. We are going to you know, you know, we're going to create a new standard switch, 1500 bytes, as our MTU. Then we're going to click on the plus sign to add an active adapter. Now remember, when we took a look at our storage, if we click back on our topology, we noticed that VMNet1 is going to be that connection for iSCSI SAN. So we're going to go ahead and choose so zero VMNix 0 and 1. So we have a total of 7, right? 0 and 1 are going to be for our management. 2 and 3 are going to be for storage. 4 is for VMs. 5 is for vMotion. 6 is for fault tolerance. And we're going to add a 7th in here, or technically an 8th, for vCenter HA. But I'm going to go ahead and, and choose VMNIC 2. Go click on OK. And click on Next. And we're going to go ahead, and what is the label? We're going to go ahead and type in here SAN. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the next tab here. I'll go ahead and add, this is going to be the port group. So we need SAN 1. So we can have SAN 1 and SAN 2 for providing high availability. I'm going to click next. And what is the IP address? So I'm going to come in here and it's going to be 10.1.2. I'm going to say 13. Slash 24 mask like so, and click on Next, and Finish. So that's going to deploy a new VM kernel adapter, which is there now. If we were to click on Host 2, we can see that we have the same thing going on, right? And if we click back on this guy, you notice how we didn't get a chance to name the switch, right? So vCenter servers is like, well, we don't really need to worry about that right now. Now the next thing for us to go do is to go to the storage adapters. We're going to add a software software add a software adapter for either iSCSI or Fiber Channel over Ethernet. We're going to use iSCSI because we don't have the ability of doing FCOE. If we did, we'd be able to do that, but we don't have that capability in the environment at, the, at this time. I'm going to click on Next, and it's going to go ahead and add that here momentarily. All right, so it's been added, and we can see it's right here. We click on the adapter, and then we have to go through and configure it. So the first thing I need to do is click on the network port binding. And I'm going to add a network port binding. But you need to make sure that you have the correct configuration in place ahead of time. So you need to make sure that you have a VM kernel adapter created, VMK1. It needs to be associated to a port group. And there needs to be a NIC associated to it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. So that, that binds the VM kernel adapter to the iSCSI storage adapter. I'm going to go click on dynamic discovery. I'm going to add a iSCSI server. In this case here it's going to be 10.1.2.25 I believe is the IP address we gave it. We'll be able to find out real quick if we log into this guy. And log in as root real quick and click on the EM1, yep, that is correct, 10.1.2.25. Don't guess, please, don't guess. I'm going to click on OK, and that's going to go ahead and configure that. Now what I get to go do is click on this little guy right here. It says Rescan Storage. I'm going to rescan the storage, and it's going to go do look for that particular storage capability. And as long as it's out there, we can go over here to Devices and 
voila, free nav that shows up, 750 gigs. And if I come down here to storage devices, guess what? Our storage appliance shows up and we're in good shape. So it sees that. If I wanted to go in here and play around with it, we could. What I'm actually gonna go do, if you're not sure what is where, you can go, or what's going on, you can click on the storage here, and you can come down here to files, and you can actually look inside of it and say, okay, well, what's here? So we should see the Linux operating system. We should also see VM1-Linux. Excellent. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you would go ahead and add storage to your ESXi host through vCenter server. Pretty straightforward stuff, right? Not too terribly difficult in terms of the operations and stuff like that. So that's basically how that comes into play. So I wanted to make sure that we covered that here moving forward so that if we want to play around with any additional capabilities, we can do that. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. And until next time, take it easy.